Hey guys, in this Hacker Rank Challenge, we're going to revisit many of the concepts that we've uh, gone through in the previous videos. So object-oriented programming in C++. We are also going to look at um, operator overloading. So this is the less than operator that we're going to overload and also overloading the output stream operator. And then we might look at something called a friend function. So um, this is going to be a bit lengthy. So in order not for you to just sit down and watch me uh, type, I have written the code here already. And as I go through the instructions of this Hacker Rank Challenge, I'll just be grabbing the code from here and pasting it in the text editor and then explaining to you uh, exactly what is going on. So uh, first, let me reset uh, this text editor here. OK, so uh, in this challenge, we have a box. And the box is going to have a length. Uh, breadth and height. This is what this part is talking about. And then we're going to have a default constructor that is going to initialize these variables to zero. Then we are going to have a couple of getters and um, a function to calculate the volume. And then we are going to overload um, the less than operator to check if a box is smaller than another box, right? We want to perform some comparison here. And then we are also going to have um, this uh, function to overload the um, insertion operator or the output stream operator to print the length, uh, the breadth, and the height of a box using C out. OK, so now let's look here. Uh, in the text editor, it says implement the class box. So the first thing that we need to do is type class box. Okay, I'm going to go all the way down and close the class here like this. Don't forget the semicolon. Next up, it says L, B, and H are integers representing the dimensions of the box. So definitely we need private number variables uh, as ints, which are going to um, serve uh, to store the, uh, the values of the length, the breadth, and the height of the box. So I'm going to have it like this. Next up, uh, the class should have the following functions. So these are the constructors. We need three constructors. So definitely, if you have a constructor for this type of class that we're working with, it needs to be public, publicly accessible in the program. So I'm going to go here, and I'm going to grab my three constructors and explain to you how they work. So uh, I think I'm going to do it below, and then I will delete that part. So. Um, here, this is our default constructor. You can see it's box, the same name as the class, but it takes no parameter. So this is the default constructor. Instead, we are assigning the value zero to the length, the uh, breadth, and the height. All right, so that's why we have it like this. In previous videos, I already explained that um, when you have this, it's just like saying L equals zero, B equals zero, and so on. But I think uh, having it that way is a bit more elegant. So uh, actually, let me have this like this. This is the default, so I'm adding this here. Now we've taken care of that part, which I've deleted. We need to take care of that parameterized constructor, which takes three integers as um, arguments here. So um, here, I've called them x, y, and z. They are all inside. And again, I am assigning the values of x to the length, the value of y to the breadth, and the value of z to the height of the box. And finally, we have this, what we call a copy constructor. And the uh, copy constructor is what is written here in that part. It should set the length, the breadth, and the height of our box to the length, the breadth, and the height of the other box that we pass it as an argument here. So that's why you see here, this is our copy constructor. And it takes a box, a reference to a box as B, which is a constant here. And it assigns the value of um, the length of the box B to our own box. And the same thing for the breadth and the height right here. So this is our copy constructor. Now let's deal with our getters. So um, we need to return the length, the breadth, and the height. I'm going to grab this right here from my codes. And I'm going to replace that part here. See that. So in fact, let me add a comment. And I'm going to say these are the getters. And you can see 
it says int get length const. This const that you see here uh, is not at the beginning, it's here, meaning that whatever value we return, we can modify it in the program, but const means this function is not modifying any of the member variables of the class. So um, it returns L, this returns B, which is the breadth, and this one returns the height. So these are our getters. Next, if we scroll down here, we need to uh, have this function called uh, calculate volume. And it's a long, long. The reason why it's long, long is because we're anticipating that in some cases, the, uh, the length, the breadth, and the height are going to be really large integer values. So uh, you know that integers have a limit, right? Uh, usually we are talking about 4 billion something. So if you multiply um, these numbers, the length, the breadth, and the height, you might end up with a number that is too large to be stored as an integer. And that's why we use the long, long data type here. So uh, I've already implemented that in my code here. And I'm going to grab this. I'm going to replace it right here. Uh, calculate the volume, and now I can paste that. So again, the return type is long, long. The name of the value is calculate volume, and we are going to multiply the length, the breadth, and the height, cast this as a long, long type uh, or a long, long value, and store it in a variable of long, long type, which is volume. So that variable can store really large values, way more than 4 billion something. When we are done, we just return that volume and we can use it in our program. So next up, uh, we're going to look at overloading operators. So if I scroll down right here, I can grab this piece of code and I will explain to you exactly what it does. We need to overload the less than operator. So this is, I think this is a really interesting one. I'm not sure I've shown you that before. So the return type is bool because when you compare, you want to know, uh, is it true or false that uh, one box is larger or smaller than the other? And they've given us already the conditions. There are three conditions that we need to check for. The first one is if the length of our box is less than the length of the other box. So the other box is what I've called other, and it's a reference to another box. So we are not copying it. It's, it's actually a reference to another box. Yeah. So um, we, we get this by reference, and then we call that we, we create a variable called condition one, which is of type bool. So it's going to be true or false. And we compare if our length is less than the length of the other box. Condition two is what they've written here. So we compare if um, our box is, um, the breadth of our box is less than the breadth of the other box. And if the length of our box is equal to the length of the other box. And that's what you can see written here. And finally, condition three is we need to check if the height of our box is uh, less than the height of the other box. And if the breadth of our box is equal to the breadth of the other box. And also if the length of our box is equal to the length of the other box. So this is condition three right here that I've written. And then um, finally, all three conditions will resolve to true. Uh, if you compare like our box and another box, if any of these matches, then it means our box is smaller than the other box. So in this case, I have this. If condition one is true, or if condition two is true, or if condition three is true, then we are going to return true. Otherwise, we're going to return false. And you can see I don't have any curly braces here because it's just a single statement following that condition. So if it's true, the, this function will exit here. If it's not true, it will keep running because that's, um, if statement will, will be false, so it will skip it and will return false right here. So uh, now we need to look at the last um, overloading function, which is, uh, it has to do with overloading the output stream operator or the uh, insertion operator. And this is what I'm going to grab now. Now I'm going to explain something with, uh, with this function here, which I think is really interesting. If you check the uh, previous tutorial I just had, I said um, the output stream operator can be overloaded like this, right? You have a reference to the output stream as the return type, and then you have the uh, operator keyword followed by the actual operator that you want to overload. And then uh, you have the um, uh, a parameter, we call it out, it's a reference to the output stream. 
and then you have a reference to an object. In our case, it's uh, a box. We are calling it B. And then here we can simply output uh, the length of the box, the uh, breadth of the box, and then the height of the box. And then when we are done, we just return uh, the output stream, which is fine because we already have this as the um, return type. And uh, the reason why we are outputting uh, the values like this is because this is what we are being asked to do. It says um, C out B should print uh, the length, the breadth, and the height of a box on a single line separated by spaces. So this is what we have. We are printing the length, space, the breadth, space, and then the height. And uh, when we're done, we return the output stream. But if you run this program now, you might think everything is fine and most of it is fine but we have one issue actually. You can see this comparison error. It says um, our overloading function here must have exactly one argument. But in our case, we have two. If you check this here, we have two. This is not working. This means we have to remove this, right? We don't want to do it that way. We want to maintain this here. But in this case, we need to add the friend keyword right here at the beginning. And this becomes a friend function. Let me type this here, friend function. And what happens is we can use that function outside of our class. We don't need to call it on a specific object. We can use it outside. Uh, and we can still access the uh, private or protected member variables of a class. So you can see here, B, I'm not calling the getters. I'm using directly uh, the member variable. I'm accessing the attribute of the class directly. So I have out B, L, B, dot B, and then B, dot H directly. But in the program, uh, if you let me scroll down to the main function right here, right? You can see how we are uh, displaying the values. Yeah, I think it's, it's that part of the program. C out, new box, and L, right? So uh, I don't want to stress or to spend too much time on uh, the friend function in this video because I think it can be a topic on its own but I figured that it was just um, a good idea to introduce you guys to it because the first time I learned about friend function, it was kind of uh, confusing for me. So I think I'll make another video and dive deeper into that. But anyway, now that we've added the friend keyword at the beginning of our function, let's try and run this code again. And in this case, we, we have passed the test. So let's uh, submit the code and make sure that we pass all the test cases. And we just did. So you can see this was kind of a lengthy uh, challenge, uh, but it was a really good refresher of the different concept that we've gone through. So from uh, how to uh, declare or implement a class, uh, deal with access specifiers, deal with um, private member variables, uh, deal with different constructors like the default constructor, a parameterized constructor, a copy constructor like this, how to deal with getters, and you add const because you're not modifying any member variables and uh, how to have different um, methods, right? So uh, this is of long, long type and also how to overload the less than operator and how to add a friend function to overload the output stream operator. So um, that's it. Uh, I hope you guys liked it. If you did, please make sure you subscribe, uh, give this video a like and I'll catch you next time. Bye.